Well, good morning, everyone. What are you doing with what God has given you? This is a question that all of Christ's followers will face on our final day. I know that I have not done enough with what I've been given. God has given all of us a number of talents. These gifts can be things like skills, wisdom, opportunities. The important question is, are we doing anything with them for the kingdom of God? Most of us have grown up with the idea of getting a good education to help us get good employment so we can have a nice home and provide for our loved ones. But often, we forget about we have been given from God. What we have been given is not for our own personal benefit, but for the purpose of building up his kingdom and honoring him. Like many of you, I've heard this gospel from Matthew numerous times at Mass but never really understood everything it meant. One of the reasons is that the word talents in this scripture means something totally different from the word talents that you and I use. To us, talents are like skills or abilities. But during Jesus' time, a talent was equal to about 6,000 denarii, which is a small Roman silver coin. Since one Denarii is a common laborer's daily wage. One talent would be roughly equivalent to 20 years of salary. So five talents, the largest amount entrusted in the first servant, is comparable to almost 100 years of salary. That is an incredible amount of money. The parable of the teaching of the talents taught those disciples and now are teaching you and I how to help prepare others for the kingdom of God. Jesus is instructing his disciples and followers to endure through tough times and to live in anticipation of the Lord's return. So what does faithfulness look like at the time of Jesus and while we're waiting? In Matthew's gospel, faithfulness is following the ministry of Jesus where he announced the arrival of his kingdom. He did it by curing the sick, blessing the meek, and serving the least. All who would follow Jesus are to preach the, God, the good news of the kingdom. And by going about the work that the, matter has, the master has called us to do. This work includes us visiting the sick or imprisoned, clothing the naked and feeding the hungry. Like the first two servants in the gospel, their master found them faithful, saying, well done, good and faithful servant. Aren't those the words, the same ones that you and I hope to hear from our master one day? Jesus' story about a businessman who leaves town and entrusts his money with his workers made perfect sense to his followers. Wealthy merchants and businessmen often had to travel abroad and leave their businesses to others to handle while they were gone. In today's parable, we hear the wealthy man prepare for a journey by entrusting his estate to servants, and they receive shares according to their ability. Although the first servant received five times as much as the third, each one received a significant amount of money. The return of the master is certain, but the timing is unknown. That should sound pretty familiar to us Christians. After a long absent, the master returns and discovers what each servant has done with the property. We heard the first two servants invested the master's talents and doubled the money. They have performed according to potential, and they have been faithful to what the master required of them. The master's response to each is the same. He commends the servants and invites them to enter his joy. The third servant is not so fortunate. He admits that he was afraid to lo lose the master's money. So to protect himself, he buried the talent in the ground. Although this may seem odd to us today, burying treasure was quite common back in those times. We hear how furious the master was. He had entrusted this servant with a portion of his property in order that he too would 
use his abilities to turn a profit. The servant, however, was too afraid to take a risk. Instead, he attempted to secure his own well-being. In the end, his unfaithfulness to carry out his master's work cost him severely. Why did Jesus tell us this story? And what can it teach us? Most importantly, it tells us something about how God deals with you and I. The parable speaks first of the master's trust in his servants. While there were no strings attached, this was obviously a test to see if the master's workers would be reliable in their use of the gifts entrusted in them. The master rewards those who are faithful and he punishes those who sit by idly and do nothing with the gifts. God rewards those who use their gifts for serving him and the good of others. These servants could be compared to us as followers and how we use God's given abilities or skills that we call talents. We will be judged in the end times on what kind of stewards we were with the talents that God has given us. When we say the confidi or prayer at the beginning of a mass, we ask for forgiveness for sinning, for what we have done and what we have failed to do. As Advent approaches, let's take a look at our lives and see where we might be falling short. Maybe we, where we can do more with the talents and gifts that we have been given. It would be good to remember it's not who you are, but what you have done. You know, we can tell much about how someone loves the Lord by the way they live their lives. Simply said, our actions should follow our beliefs. If we use the talents that God has given us, we will receive joy from God. But if we're stingy, fearful, and don't invest what we have been given by God's glory, we will not receive his joy. On our final day, whether we receive our master's joy is up to us. After years of helping preside at funerals, I have yet to see a hearse with a trailer hitch on the bumper. That is because in reality, at the end of our lives, we own nothing. God expects us to take care of what we have been given. It's like the servants in today's gospel. They never owned those valuable talents, but they were given the opportunity to take care of them. When we take care of what God has given to us, we're not the owners, but we are the ones watching over it. We get to make the decisions whether we honor him or put ourselves first. The Lord has left us with the promise of his return. Meanwhile, he has given us gifts to use for the benefit of our community. Using these gifts can be risky. We may face criticism, persecution, isolation, or even rejection. Like the third servant, we cannot play it safe, fearing negative possibilities and letting our gifts go unused. Haven't we known people who are like the first or second servant? They seem to have the ability and energy that helps them respond to God's grace by using their talents wisely and for the benefit of others. I've met numerous amazing volunteers at different church ministries. The parable today urges us to use our talents and maybe take risks. Perhaps some of us already know what we should do, what changes we need to make but are not doing it, not risking leaving our comfort zone to face what is asked of us to be a follower of Christ. A suge suggestion, if you like to make a change in your life regarding your God-given talents, is to talk to God every day. In the mornings, check your daily calendars, looking for an opportunity to use your talents. At the end of the day, check to see where you did or didn't use them. This Thanksgiving holiday, is a great reminder to also give thanks to God for all he gives us. Like today's gospel, you and I are now living in the in-between time, waiting for our Lord and Master to return. So today, let's think about what talents God has given us in terms of skills, opportunities, and wisdom. Then ask the question, are we using our talents for God? Or do we bury them and use them only for ourselves? Are you willing to invest your talents to help prepare 
for the coming of God's glory?